I am coached a professional Valorant player, and this video is about the routines and tips I gave him. While a lot of people think pros are a lot better than everyone else at literally everything, the main issue I found in this session was actually one I found in most hack FPS players I've coached, and chances are you have it too. If you want me to aim coach you, there's a Fiverr link in the description, but try the stuff I give in this video and see if it solves your issues first. It's pretty generic, and I don't really enjoy coaching when it feels like I go over the same stuff for like three sessions in a row. Now the pro I worked with is Anima, he plays for a Turkish Valorant team called the Istanbul Wildcats. The biggest flaw he had was when someone was counter strafing against him, he died, he couldn't hit counter strafing enemies. For some reason, every TAC FPS guide I see talks about the importance of counter strafing as a way to move, but I never see guides explaining how to click on those people who are counter strafing, which I'd argue is just as important. If a movement pattern exists, you should be ready to shoot anyone who uses it against you. And a lot of people think it's best to train things like this in game where people are actually making those movements. And in Valorant, there are only a few options. You can go into the range or deathmatch. In deathmatch, you probably see like 10 people every minute, meaning there's downtime between fights. And also, not everyone will be counter strafing. So, despite popular belief, I don't think deathmatch is a very good way to train against in game movement patterns. It's fine for training like general skills, but when you have one specific issue you're trying to work on, like shooting counter strafing enemies, I don't think it's that ideal. Your other option is the range, which has bots that strafe, but they also stop a lot. Even though there's always a bot, it is a very predictable bot, and it's not a very difficult bot. So this really won't help that much. So, as usual, we have to turn to Kovacs. And to find a good scenario, I had to figure out the source of Anima's issues so that we could train that specifically. Fortunately, I've seen this issue a million times before, and people with this issue tend to have one of three problems. The first is that they struggle with actually being able to flick to the head. The head is so small that even if it wasn't moving, you would still die before you could kill the other guy. Watching Anima's gameplay made me confident that this issue wasn't bottlenecking his skill. If you do have this issue, put on some static clicking and target switching ranging in size from like 1 wall 4 targets, small reload, 30% smaller, and 1 wall 20 targets, extra, 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 extra small. The second potential issue I see is that you simply can't hit moving targets, and this is a lot more common than the previous one. If the target were to continue in a straight line forever, you would still struggle to hit it. This problem can be trained with scenarios like floating heads timing variants, and from reviewing Anima playing these, I was able to confidently say that this was not his main issue. The third problem is by far the most common issue, and it's also why counter strafing is so powerful. It's when the enemy switches direction, you get thrown off the target, and you can't get back on it. Pretty much everyone struggles with this to an extent, and should train it, but some people struggle so much with the previous two issues that it can also make sense to focus on those alone for some of your time. This issue is where Anima seemed to struggle, so it's what we decided to focus on. If we go back to the clip where I realized this was Anima's main issue, we'll notice that he'd often be shooting at where the KO was instead of where he is. This suggests that he can't react well. You may be thinking that this would be everyone's issue, but if you take a look at this clip from another coaching session, you'll notice that this player was able to react to the enemy's movement and follow them pretty easily, but he lacked the precision to be able to make it on their head and ended up shooting next to their head, so this was the main focus for him, issue 1. Anima's issue can be fixed with a variety of scenarios, so I made two playlists for him. He told me to train an hour and a day, half in the morning and half in the afternoon, so I made a morning and an evening playlist for him. Both of these playlists were very similar, containing some of my favorite randomized dynamic clicking scenarios, and there's a strong focus on horizontal motion for these playlists as the goal is to train for the directional change and counter strafing enemies in Valorant. Their share codes are in the description. If you're struggling to figure out which issue I've gone over is your main issue in aiming against counter strafing enemies, that means you probably struggle with all the issues, so you should just train on sends for the third issue as they are small, moving, and random. You don't need to spend much time isolating other things. Before I show you another playlist I made that Anima said was arguably one of the best Valorant Kovacs playlists, I plan to do a video similar to this either using what I've done with Noted or what I've done with Zexro. Comment which one of these you guys want to see first so I can give you guys what you want and subscribe so you don't miss those videos. 
So about a week later, I talked to Anima, and he told me he was feeling much better at hitting moving enemies, and he felt like his aim was a lot less spray and pray. He asked me for a playlist to help him with his reactions to being peaked, so I made him a playlist to improve both his reaction time and his ability to hit targets that are moving when they peak him. Normally, people will just use reactive tracking to train this, but I chose to use a variety of scenarios. I used some static clicking like target acquisition flick variants and reflex micro plus plus, some reactive tracking, and also some dynamic clicking like noted clicking heads and firework flick variants. The static scenarios are focused on a target appearing and reacting to it. The dynamic ones are focused on hitting a moving enemy like the one strafing at you from behind cover. The reactive tracking is just a way of controlling your mouse, getting better at your fine precise finger motion, and your reaction time. Anima told me this playlist was great for Valorant, and he's seen a lot of Valorant playlists before. I think it's pretty good for training being peaked, but not as a general Valorant playlist as there's a lot of other aim skills in Valorant. After a few weeks, Anima told me he definitely preferred the dynamic playlist for his own training. He felt it reflected his issues much more as I initially expected. Now the other conversation we had was what's the best DPI, which I feel like doesn't get brought up enough and really needs to be addressed. Anima asked me which DPI was best and pulled up the pro settings website. I told him he himself is a pro and the only difference between him and the people on this website is that the website found their settings one time. In reality, the difference between different DPIs is pixel skipping. 1600 will be smoother and more accurate than 400. That being said, in a game like Valorant where heads are pretty big, this accuracy is rarely an issue. I find that the DPI difference most noticeable is in very small targets in Kovac scenarios when you're also using like 20 centimeters per 360 and 400 dpi will cause you to literally skip over the targets a lot of people talk about input lag even i have in the past but if you look at the actual source of what this input lag stat comes from it's just a matter of how far apart the dots are in your mouse if they're four times closer the mouse will have to move four times less distance when you start moving it meaning that the first dot comes up four times sooner so that there will be less input lag I still recommend running 1600 or 3200 as long as your mouse can handle it, just because pixel skipping can get annoying and it may cause you to lose one in every 10 to 50 long range gunfights in game, which isn't huge but it is annoying. So to all of you who just blindly follow what the pros do, my experiences with Zexero and Anima have shown me that the pros just blindly follow each other, and the original 400 or 800 idea dates back to when mouse sensors couldn't handle anything past 800. They're better now, you can run higher DPIs. If you change your DPI and want to run your old sense but just smoother, just divide your sense by whatever you multiplied your DPI. Let me know in the comments if you like this new video format where I go over what I did in a coaching session and bring together a bunch of pretty unrelated topics, or if you want me to stick to formatting videos so that I only go over one general topic per video. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more aim training content.